welcome. This single unit provides extreme cooling in the smallest form factor available for the newest generation of Watercool's Mora series. For the best cooling, there is no substitute for an external radiator. But just how much performance can you really get in this smaller size? Today, we're building a standalone Mora 4 200, including a reservoir and a pump, and then testing its capabilities right here, right now. This is the Vector Network, and let's begin. Mora stands for Monster Radiator. Immediately, this Mora 4 200 stands out with a modern and industrial design. The fit and finish is premium, including a stainless steel frame, housing multiple rows of densely packed copper tubing, interlaced with ultra-fine aluminum fins to maximize heat transfer efficiency, the G1 quarter inch threaded ports ensure compatibility and connect it to a water cool PC to deliver silent, reliable, and extreme performance cooling outside the case. To control the custom loop, water cool provides two options with the passive controller currently available and the active controller due out in the future. The passive controller wasn't used because it would require extra cables going from the Mora to the PC. And the result was still only be controlling the loop through the motherboard. This setup is controlled all directly with the Aqua Computer D5 Next using the three buttons and the screen. The Mora can operate horizontally. In this case, we'll add the stainless steel feet for vertical placement. We'll use two screws to secure each foot to the Mora. To house the pump, we're using the Watercool Heat Killer D5 pump base with black struts. We'll start by attaching the four black struts to the pump base with four screws. For the D5 pump, we're using the Aqua Computer D5 Next. This one has three buttons and a display to configure the loop. The pump base includes the O-ring and mounting materials. Drop the O-ring into the pump base, followed by the D5 pump and bracket, and eight screws to secure the pump to the base. The heat killer tube basic mount secures the reservoir pump combo to the Mora. Screw in two vibration dampeners for each of the two mounts. Then we can slide the mounts onto the struts. The heat killer multi-port top with inlet downpipe allows for more loop configuration options. The inlet downpipe screws right in and is made of acrylic. The heat killer 100 millimeter tube is made of borosilicate glass that is noticeably thick and clear. Drop an O-ring into the top followed by the tube and together we can drop an O-ring and the top and the tube into the pump base and secure it with four screws. The Mora 4 tube adapter secures the reservoir pump combo to the Mora. First, secure the adapter to the basic mount with four screws. And secure the basic mount to the struts. Then we'll screw four mounts into the side of the Mora. And push to secure the adapter onto the Mora. For our fittings, we're using Optimus 16x10 flex compression fittings. We're also using Bitspower Artemis 90 degree adapters and Coolance QD3 Quick Disconnect 
female 16 by 10 compression fittings. For tubing, water cool heat killer EPDM 16 by 10 will be used in this build for its flexibility and stability. The matte black surface also matches the rest of the unit for a clean, consistent look. We'll drop in a pair of Optimus 16 by 10 compression fittings to the top of the Mora and to the top of the reservoir. We'll now connect the outlet of the Mora to the inlet of the reservoir. A plug for the fill port, another plug for an extra port on the base, followed by a bits power 90 degree adapter and an Optimus 16 by 10 compression fitting. For this run, we'll use an Iceman Cooler F40 glass filter. We'll add a pair of Optimus 16 by 10 compression fittings and connect the EPDM tubing to each side of the Iceman glass filter. and also to the Coolant QD3 female fitting. Then connect this run to the outlet of the reservoir. Next, we'll add a bit power 90 degree adapter to the bottom of the Mora, followed by an Optimus 16 by 10 compression fitting. Connect the tubing to the Coolant QD3 female fitting. Then connect this run to the inlet of the Mora. For cooling, we're using two Noctua NFA20 200mm fans among the quietest high airflow fans available with full PWM control. We'll start by attaching each fan cable to the fan bracket. Then securing each fan to the bracket with four screws each. Flipping the bracket over, we can attach two fan extension cables. Now we can drop the fan bracket into the Mora and push in to secure. The Mora 4 200 fan cover is a functional fan guard designed specifically for this iteration of the Mora. This front grille is made of thick powder coated steel and acts as a safety guard while still allowing for optimal airflow. We'll first remove the screw on the Mora, then screw in the mounting material. There are four mounts total. Now drop the fan cover onto the Mora and push to secure. Next, connect the fan cables to the Y splitter, then to the fan header on the D5 pump. To power the pump, we'll use a SATA power cable adapter that is separately plugged into an outlet. Connect the SATA power cable to the pump. For liquid, we're using distilled water and also a silver coil as biocide for loop longevity. And there we go. The Noctua NF-A20 fans are fully installed onto the Mora 4 200, ready to deliver massive airflow at ultra low noise levels. Together with the radiator's enormous surface area, this is how silent, uncompromised cooling is achieved, even for the most power hungry water cooled builds. This way is significantly cleaner and the external radiator can be moved to a spot that is out of sight with the only limitation being the length of the two tubes and no cables are needed to go to and from the Mora and the PC. For testing, we're using an Intel i9-14900KS that's been delitted, cooled by the Iceman Cooler Direct Dive CPU block on the MSI Meg Z790 ACE motherboard and 32 gigabytes of Corsair DDR5 memory. The Corsair HX1200i, a 1200 watt PSU, powers the system on an open air test bench with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. To obtain the results, 40% is a silent profile at about 600 to 700 RPM and modest flow, enough to keep everything moving without noise. 100% represents max performance at full speed. 
In Cinebench multi-core loop benchmark, in silent mode, the average core temperatures climbed slowly and then leveled out around 76 degrees Celsius. In performance mode, the temperatures held flat around 68 to 70 degrees Celsius. That's up to an 8 degree delta, purely from thermal headroom. For core clocks, performance mode stays solid throughout at 4.79 GHz. Silent mode dips slightly towards the end and holds an average of 4.72 GHz. It's only a 70 MHz gain, but it's consistent. And during sustained multi-core workloads, that margin adds up. My takeaway? Even at 40%. This setup handles a 400 watt load, including this 14th generation Intel flagship processor with 24 cores and using the 320 watt BIOS profile. And if more performance is needed, 100% unlocks it. The more a 4200 doesn't just scale, it dominates. Adding a GPU to this loop significantly increases the thermal load, pushing the more a 4200 much closer to the edge. But with adequate airflow, it should handle both the flagship CPU and GPU in the same loop, even under sustained load. For this setup, the case will no longer need to fit a radiator, its fans, a reservoir, or even a pump. The main consideration is where the pass-through slot will go, and that typically fits into a PCI slot. With the Mora, the case will only need to fit the motherboard and power supply, while the CPU and GPU cooling is reduced down to the size of the water blocks. This completely unlocks new build configurations, and also the potential to use cases that previously would have been too small. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.